Hola amigo, we made it to the pond. Now, I don't know if y'all can see this or anything, but look back there behind me, you can see that this side's kind of shady, that side's still in the sun. Now as for the time, it is uh, right around 5.50, so, well we should have about two hours of fish. I'm gonna be completely honest guys, trying to strap this thing in is by far the hardest part, because I'll show you right here in a second, it is uh, not proportional to the mule. We have literally like one fourth of it sticking on, and the rest of it just hanging off. Try to get it off here. If the camera goes flying, that means I uh, got it off. And the camera goes flying. Oh, sweet. Now we just set y'all down real smoothly or as smoothly as possible. Okay, sweet. You're good. Okay, now for essentials, we got the GoPro. We got the fanny pack. We got two fishing rods and the life jacket. And yes, guys, I can swim really, really, really good, but I'm always going to wear a life jacket. I mean, here's the thing, guys. Whenever you turn in a kayak, there's always something that made you turn over. Whether a lure came back and hit you in the eye and you lost balance and you can't see. Or maybe you hit some current in a river or something that kind of turns you over. Or possibly the worst case scenario, you're in the Nile River and then like a big hippo comes and knocks you off. Nevertheless, guys, 99% of the time you flip in a kayak, there's a reason. And that reason very well may cause you to not be able to swim. So keep that in mind and uh, we'll keep a life jacket on. That's what Mammy always said. Watch out for them crocodiles. But uh, here we go, guys. We're just gonna kick it down here because I uh, got my hands full and too lazy to drag it. Too lazy to drag I'd always rather make one trip than two. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> Now the water seems pretty clear. Last time I was here, there was some big old basses in here. If you know what I mean, they big bass. And uh, we're gonna try to catch those big bass. We're using two primary lures, but I will definitely show you that once we get into the pond. As long as I don't get eaten first. Oh, there's a bass, there's a bass, there's a bass. <gasps> now potential hazards here. There are snakes, but that's probably not a problem. There are snapping turtles, which is probably my biggest risk. Did you ever hear about the tale about the guy who went out to see if a snapping turtle would eat humans? Yeah, he never came back. It's been eight years. But anyways, guys, I'm going to set y'all down for a minute. I've got to try to get into this kayak without killing myself. Not literally, but, well, yeah, literally. If any of you guys have a kayak, then, uh, well, you know the struggle. It's always a struggle. Will you tip the boat or not? Don't look at my underwear, Karen. Stop. If I can do this without getting a drop of water in here, I call that a success. Karen, stop looking at my underwear. So, guys, uh, you ready to go fishing? You getting a really nice view of my croc? What's it look like down there? See if y'all can find the rock. It keeps hurting every time I walk. And here we are in the water. Dude, I love kayaks. It's so fun. Talking about getting in a random pond and doing bluegill fishing, I bet you could do amazing. The only reason I don't do it is because my mom thinks I'm going to drown, but that's a different story. Anyways. Okay, guys, so now that we're in the pond, I'm going to show you a little bit about what I plan on fishing with. I plan on fishing with mainly two things. First is KG yeet worms, but then I'm also going to try a KG spinner bait too. Then I'm going to start out with the spinner bait, and then once I switch over to the yeet worms, I'll show you how I rig it up. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the spinner bait. It is windy, so generally, if it's windy, that's a good time for a spinner bait. Oh, got one. What in the world? Oh, that's my first cast. Dude, what is wrong with these fish? Why are they biting so soon? My first cast, buoy. Buoy, what you doing? That's my first cast. <gasps> this water's so cold. The water's so cold. Stop. Jamie, Jamie, stop. Jamie, Jamie. That right there would be a one-fourth ounce uh, double willow leaf. It's perfect for ponds, but oh, Jamie. Oh my goodness, dude, you're stinking freezing. That's how you do it. That's my first cast. Now, usually the tale says, if you believe in witchcraft, if you catch a fish on your first cast, you're you're not going to catch a fish for the rest of the day. I don't believe that. And I'm about to dispel that myth right now. But anyways, as for Jamie, he seems a pretty, pretty good fish. I'm going to let him go. There he goes. See you later, buddy. Oh, snap. Hold the phone. I have a cedar in my ear. That ain't going to work, son. Get away from me. But dude, that's my first cat. I think today is going to be a really good day. It's just uh, all I've done. Listen, guys. I threw the spinnerbait a foot off the bank, reeled it back about four feet feet and then he bit it. Okay guys, I'll tell you what I'm actually gonna do right now. I'm gonna switch bait. The baits I was using right there, I caught it on my first cast. These are available on the website, kennelgrade1.com slash shop. But the next bait I'm about to pull out with the yeet worms, they are also available on the website. We'll just put that, that rod right back here. Pull out my spinning rod. You can actually see the yeet worm is right there. I'm just reusing one that I fished with last time because these worms are pretty durable. You can use them more than once. And so to fish this bait, super simple. I've got a weightless Texas rig. And the way I'm gonna catch fish with this is by letting it sink on a slack line. What it's going to do is give the bait as much freedom as possible. It's just going to wiggle just like this all the way down. You can also wacky rig it, but since I'm fishing like around cover and trees and stuff, I think the weightless Texas rig will be a better option. The way that you tell you how to bite is you watch your line that's floating on top of the water. If it jumps out, you got to fish. Set that hook. Set it hard, so I rip that sucker's lips off. We don't have room for mercy. Ah! 
there's one. Oh gosh. There we go. Yeet worm. Oh, it's another good one. Oh my gosh, it's Dylan. Dude, I just caught Dylan. This ain't good. This ain't good, dude. Dylan's mom told him not to get out of the house because he, you know, he's supposed to stay in quarantine, but. Dude, Dylan, what are you doing? Dude, chill. What are you doing? Dylan, my boy, your mom said to stay in quarantine. I'm just going to let him go. Yo, dude, get out of here. <laughs> dude, Dylan's a stinking freak. What is he doing? His mom told him to stay inside and he got out here. Gosh, Dylan, what are you doing, man? We're literally under a national lockdown and this dude's just going out eating yeet worms. I don't know what to do with him. There's another one. Okay, this is Trenton. He's fine, dude. Yeah, Trenton. Oh, Trenton, dude, chill. What do you think this is? Waterworks? Hot dog. Again, right there, you guessed it, on the yeet worm. He ate it. Right there, top of the mouth. Perfect hook set. He wasn't going anywhere. And, uh, well, now he's going right back to the house. You're in quarantine. Chill. I'm out here having to quarantine all these bass. They don't even listen to they mamas. Now, the fishing's not over, but I am going to cut into this video for about one minute, and we're going to try to prank my goat. Then after that, we're going to go right back to fishing. But what we're going to prank it with is we have a speaker right here. Now, this is the Cove 2.0 speaker. Now, about a year ago, we had the original speaker, but with this one... It cuts off into two and it's kind of surround sound. So what I'm wanting to do is since it's a Bluetooth speaker, I want to take it, go set it somewhere over there in the bushes and then start playing like predator coyote sounds. Right something. now they're just chilling as you can see. They're just sitting there chewing sticks and eating hay. They're basically doing nothing at all. So they're not on guard. So let's go ahead and turn them both on. They're two separate speakers and they work in unison. Now since this speaker's strong suit is being able to break in half and turn into two, I think I'm going to put one right that way and one on this way. That way it'll kind of sound like there's two different coyotes. I'm going to go set it up. And these are goats, so they're probably not going to catch me. <laughs> oh! Ooh. I'm not doing anything suspicious, goats. I promise you that. Nothing suspicious. Also, the Bluetooth works up to like 32 feet away, so that'll really help us. Here we go. We're going to start playing it. There it goes. Bro. Stinking trigger. I got the volume turned down so they'll think they're kind of out a little bit. Chad's just chilling. He don't even care what's going on, son. Chip don't even care either. Her anxiety's spiking. It's okay, Tater. It's a prank. It's a social experiment. Look, it's the camera. It's a social experiment. It's a social experiment. Okay, okay, that's enough. Tater, it was a joke. Chill. Now, the 2.0 speaker actually lasts up to seven hours on a single charge. If you want it, you can head on down to the first link in the description and use code KSOUND, all caps, for 60% off. Now, let's go back to ripping some lips. There he is. Biggin, biggin, biggin. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Dude, this may be my biggest fish. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh snap. This is huge. Dude, he's massive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat you like a taco. I'm just kidding. So you may be saying, you know, dude, what's his name? Funny that you asked. I was actually gonna ask you, name the fish. There he is. Come to, come to me. Come to, come to, I'm trying to think of something clever to say, but I can't think of it. Come to Hookset Town. I don't know. Get up here, boy. Sometimes my brain just stops working. And I don't know what to do about it. Hey, how you doing, son? How's your quarantine been? Yeah, me too. Quarantine or quarantine? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell, but uh, I've been pretty well deprived of human interaction for quite some time now. Quarantine's getting rough. I need help. What you looking at, Chad? What you looking at? Hey, no, don't talk to me like that. No! Anyways, guys, we're done fishing, but now we're gonna do something with this goat, and it is not gonna be easy. It may work perfectly. He may break my leg. I don't know. We're about to find out, though. So, long story short, if you have no idea of anything about my goats, let me give you a real quick rundown. That's a boy. That's a girl. That's a girl. That girl is definitely pregnant. She's gonna have a kid pretty soon, if not two. You can tell because she kind of looks like she's been going to McDonald's a few too many times. But anyways, you get the point. The problem is that she is about to have kids, and Billy Goats, which is what that thing is. They can actually cause problems by a couple reasons. One, they can actually try to kill the kids because, well, I don't know why they do that. I guess they're stupid, I guess. But the second reason is as soon as she's done having her kids, he may try to go breed her and if he's always trying to, you know. So what a lot of people do is they separate their billy whenever their nanny have their kids. And so that's what we're going to do today. But then one more thing, Chad literally just 
walks out of the fence. I mean, it's hooked up to electric all the way around it, but he just walks right through it. I mean, to be honest, guys, I just don't know if the fence isn't strong enough or if maybe he's literally Iron Man. Nevertheless, he gets out and we're about to chain him up. Not like chain him up like in a dungeon. But we're going to put him on a collar. That way we can like keep him inside. He's still going to have plenty of food, still going to have plenty of water, still going to have plenty of grass, and still going to be able to interact with those goats. So we'll come on over here, get the same collar that was on my little dog that died a couple weeks ago. Guys, that was sad. He didn't last but three days. Now this collar has my name, address, and phone number, so you are absolutely not about to get a look at it. Yeah, I know what you're doing, Jeffrey. Okay, Chad, come here. Come here, Chad. Hey, come back. Come here. Chad, stop! Chad, you monster! Get back here, Chad. Chad. Huh. That didn't work. Let me go grab a handful of corn. We'll make it a lot easier. Round two. Come here, Chad. Here, Chad. Got some corn for you. Chad, it ain't gonna do nothing to you. Come eat this corn. Chad, come eat the corn. Chad. All right, now, you're just going to chill for just a second, buddy. And boom. You're good, Chad. Chad's got a collar now. That way, if he ever runs away and goes to, like, Tennessee, someone could call me and I can get him back. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just cutting into the video for a second. I just want to say, if he does run away and one of you guys find him in Tennessee... You can just keep him. And for you guys that are kind of confused that I just put a collar on a goat, it's actually kind of popular. I think. It's definitely not hurting him. Like, he, he doesn't even know what's going on. His name's Chad. And so now I'm out here in the goat pen. Hey, look at me. I'm in the goat pen. Now, right now, I need to be finding a good spot that has plenty of grass, access to water, access to the mineral block, as well as access to shelter. Now, Chad, he's weird. He doesn't sleep in the shed. He sleeps in the pot. Also, guys, don't, this isn't going to be permanent. This isn't going to be, like, his home forever. This is literally just temporary until, like, I'm thinking it's four or five days after she has her kids. And she's gonna have him like any time guys like she's like not trying to like not trying to like assume or anything but you know what i mean she's pretty fat it's only gonna be temporary then i can just let him out and let him free roam like he always has i mean hey it's either chain him up like this or put him in a cage i think it chains a little bit better all right so access to plenty of grass right here salt block right here access to water also right here and then like i was saying earlier he's weird so he sleeps in the pot so we can always just move that out here i'm thinking we we I th i'm thinking kind of that we just stomp him in right here i think so i think this is a great spot while i'm fixing this up let's go ahead and play some Pretty epic Christmas music. Okay, 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 and honestly, we're done. I just gotta move this salt block out of the way, scoot the water over a little bit. Chad's about to find his new home. He can go from right there about where the salt block is, and his chain extends all the way out to here, so let me make sure he can't get an electric fence. I just stepped over the fence and got shocked. But how in the world is that man made of steel? But then that brings up a philosophical question. If he's iron, and iron is a great conductor of electricity, shouldn't that just shock him more? Anyways, let's go ahead and move this chair. I have this chair here so I can sit down with him and tell him stories about Nom. Now, I didn't fight Nom, but these goats don't know that. I've been pretty well deprived of human interaction for quite some time now. Oh my goodness, look at all these ants. These are straight fire ants. 10,000 likes and I'll put my hand, I'm just kidding guys, I'm not doing that. But for real though, I do want 10,000 likes and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that because you know, like if you're not, then what you been doing? But without further ado, let's go get Chad and hook him up, I guess. Chad's a small goat, he doesn't really require a lot of land. Chad, get your butt up here. I know you heard me. Don't make me come down there, young man. So I was actually having a little bit of trouble getting Chad to follow me, so. I went and got corn, and here he comes. I'm gonna sprinkle out the corn right here, just so that they can pick at it. And whenever Chad comes in range, I'll get the chain and hook him up. Come check it out, Chad, there's corn. Hey Chad, go eat the corn. You're a cool kid. Go eat the corn, Chad. I'm definitely not peer pressuring you, but hurry, go eat the corn. If you don't eat the corn, oh, that's nice. If you don't eat that corn, then you're weird. I don't know. I'm just trying to get him to eat the corn. Here, go eat some corn, Chad. Eat some corn. Come eat some corn, Chad. Eat some corn, Chad. Chadster. What up, Chad? What's up, Chad? How are you doing, Chad? You having a good time, Chad? 
Dang it! Why am I so bad at catching Chad? Why is this so hard? He's just a goat. He literally has a handle as horns. I just finessed you, Chad. I just finessed you. Chad, it's not a big deal, dude. Like, come on. Just give it a try. It's, it's nothing more than a chain. There you go, Chad. Now, you'll get used to it. It's not a big deal. It's just like a chain. I mean, it kind of makes you look like a rapper, if I'm going to be honest. What do you think about it, Chad? Not so bad after all, is it? It'll make your neck stronger. It'll make you look cool. You have plenty of time to contemplate the true meaning of life. You'll figure it out. You're pretty smart. He's not smart. He'll never figure it out. But right now, we're looking at a... 25 seconds in. He's doing just fine. And again, I'll say this one more time just for you guys and Chad. You're only going to be in here for like a week. After that, you'll be perfectly fine.